Hello, and welcome to our Wednesday meditations here at Grace Lutheran Church in Mendham. I'm Pastor Tim Wenger, the vice pastor here at this congregation, a retired professor of theology and, his, and church history uh, from the Lutheran Theological Seminary at Philadelphia, now living up in these parts near Mendham. Uh, and it's my, been my pleasure, my excitement, every uh, Wednesday to prepare these uh, meditations and we're going through the different parts of the catechism and today we're moving from the first part which is the Ten Commandments to the Creed so I'd like to call to mind what Luther says about the particular way in which he orders the catechism moving from commandments to Creed to Lord's Prayer he says it's it's like a sick person who first needs a diagnosis that's the commandments and the diagnosis is sin, and then gets grace, that is the promise of grace in the, uh, the prescription of grace, if you will, in the creed. And then finally, the Lord's Prayer is that call to CBS in the middle of the night, or as I always like to say, sending your spouse out to CBS in the middle of the night to get the prescription filled. Prayer is begging God for the very grace that God promises. And in fact, in the large catechism, which if you remember, is a compilation of Luther's sermons that he did for the young people and the parents uh, in his congregation in 1528. In 1529, he put them all together uh, in a book called the German Catechism, or we call now the large catechism. And in the beginning of the creed, then he actually um, uh, talks about uh, how this moves from the Ten Commandments to the Creed and why. So he writes, uh, thus far we have heard the first part of Christian teaching and in it we've seen all that God wishes us to do and not to do. The Creed properly follows, which sets forth all that we must respect, uh, expect and receive from God. In short, it teaches us to know him perfectly. It is given in order to help us do what the Ten Commandments require of us. For as we said above, they are set so high that all human ability is far too puny and weak to keep them. So first comes that diagnosis that we are sinners, too weak and puny to keep the Ten Commandments. Most people imagine the Ten Commandments as a nice set of rules that, you know, if you just followed them, your life would be wonderful, 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 and, and it shouldn't be too hard to do all of those things. But now that we've been through the Ten Commandments, you see that the Ten Commandments over and over again are demanding of us that we love God above all else and our neighbor as ourselves. And they show us our sin. By the law, St. Paul writes in Romans 3, uh, uh, chapter, chapter 3, verse 20, comes the knowledge of sin. Not at all what we expect. We think by the law comes the ladder by which we climb up to God. Nope, you can try climbing that ladder, but we're too weak and puny to do it. So instead, God comes down to us. And that's what the creed is all about. So we begin with the first article of the creed, which is simply, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting what Luther emphasizes in his explanations to his congregation. In 1528, you see, he, pre he preached actually three times uh, in the evenings, or the, the Vesper service, or the afternoon service, and the children were required to be there as well as their parents and, and the servants in the household and so on. And they heard uh, Luther go through, uh, three times, go through the, uh, uh, the catechism. It took him about, oh, anywhere from eight to 10 sessions to get through the whole thing. And uh, the first time he goes through the first article of the creed, he emphasizes the word father. But by the third time, and then also here in the, uh, uh, in, in the large catechism as a result, he emphasizes the word creator. Here's the way he then summarizes the whole creed. Hence, the creed could briefly be condensed into these few words. I believe in God the Father who created me. I believe in God the Son who has redeemed me. I believe in the Holy Spirit who has made me holy. 
Those are the three things that God does in terms of the three persons of the Trinity. Um, at the end, hopefully, if I don't forget, when we get to the Holy Spirit, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we end up experiencing the Trinity backwards. Luther talks about that, though, uh, later in the large catechism. So we have God as creator. This is so important for Luther that in the small catechism, at the top of each section of the creed, uh, he, he has a title. So we discover here the first article, colon, on creation. And then the second article, on redemption. And the third article, on being made whole. It used to be uh, we'd use the word sanctification, which was just a fancy Latin term for being made holy. Uh, unfortunately, some very pious people have, have rather uh, uh, kidnapped that word sanctification, so I prefer to use the much more down-to-earth being made holy. Any rate, let's go back to the first article, I believe in God, the, uh, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. What Luther says in the small catechism ought to really surprise us. I believe that God has created me together with all that exists, all creatures. I believe that God has created me. My kids in eighth grade uh, confirmation that I used to teach back in the 1980s at Cross Lutheran Church in Roberts, Wisconsin, they had no trouble believing God created the whole world. They had, by that time, eighth graders, they had kind of some sense of causality, and they knew you could go back to the Big Bang, and then the big question was, well, what came before that? Uh, Stephen Hawking's answer was, well, there was nothing before that. But somehow you want a cause. Where did that all come from, you know? And so it's easy to imagine a God who created everything, however God may have done it. But Luther begins, as he did in the large catechism, I already read that sentence, I believe God created me. <laughs> My eighth graders, if they'd had uh, uh, sex education class by then, would kind of always laugh at it and go, no, pastor, you don't know. God didn't create me. It had to do with sperm and eggs and embryos and zygots and who knows what else. And they used to laugh. That's really where faith comes in, far more than that God created the world. That God created me and all that exists. That's the amazing thing. I think parents know this, at least I have experienced it both as a parent and a grandparent. When you look at the baby's hands and see those little fingerprints already there, there's something so marvelous, so miraculous about that, as well as all kinds of other things that babies are and do and how they grow. There is a kind of miracle behind it all. So to say God created me is that miracle, but it is a miracle of faith to say that. It's not just something you can prove, but God is involved in all of that. Now, the other thing that Luther does in the Catechism um, <clears throat> is that he moves immediately from creation to preservation, that God preserves this life. Now, Luther knows there is evil in this world, but it's interesting he doesn't talk about evil in the catechisms until the second article, where he has the grace, the medicine, to combat evil, which is Christ, his death and resurrection. So here, you have to imagine Luther thinking about only the blessings of creation. He knows there's evil, uh, but he just doesn't talk about it here. And instead, he uses this language in the small catechism again. God has given me and still preserves, here it goes, my body and soul, ears, eyes, ears, and all limbs and senses, reason and all mental faculties. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all property, along with all the necessities and nourishment for this body and life. God protects me against all danger and shields and preserves me from all evil. There you have the list. Now, it's when you get to that word all that people begin to have trouble. Well, wait a minute. No, I, I mean, there is evil. How can you say God protects me from all evil? That's not what Luther means there. <clears throat> it's like if you had one teacher in a town, St. Augustine once said, and you said, 
all the people in this town are taught by that teacher. It's not that all people are taught, but by but whoever is taught is taught by that one. The all here means every time you and I experience preservation, being shielded from evil, protected from danger, along with all the necessities and nourishment for this body and life, which is that long list that he's already given. Any time we experience that, that comes from God. He protects me from all evil. And what's so interesting about that is that we hardly ever notice. We, we hardly ever notice because we just go on with our life. And you know, I mean, every once in a while it has happened to us where we're walking along and a, a limb br branch uh, breaks off and crashes right in front of us or something or, or some other thing, you know, you're driving. Of course, all is the speed limit and all is correctly and you're paying attention and all of a sudden something happens and you, oh, there but by the grace of God go I. That's true. That's what Luther's talking about. To say nothing of all the things that are going on in our body that our body does without our even willing it, namely to keep us well, you know. Now in times like these, in times of pandemic, we particularly are more sensitive to that fact. Um, I, I recently had a guy help uh, put on a little extension to a fence I have in my backyard, Paul. And Paul got COVID. Paul lived alone in his 60s, has all kinds of health issues. He was so sick he couldn't call him. When he finally just kind of recovered, sort of, kind of, a little bit, he called somebody, they took him to the hospital, the doctor came in and said, because he was already on the mend and turned it out. Paul, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> I told him, no, it's because your name was Paul. God really likes people named Paul. <laughs> so, but it is God preserving sometimes when we don't even know how it happened. His brother, who also helped with the fence, just shook his head and said, yeah, I don't know how he survived. And that's the truth. But it's the truth for all of us. And Luther lists all those good things that God does as a result of creation, including shoes. I already talked about shoes when we talked about the fourth petition, that Luther includes shoes there. And I've talked about it sometimes in my sermons as well. That's just amazing. God provides shoes, and yet we put on our shoes, and we don't even think of the miracle that's involved in that. Luther next in his explanation goes on to say why God does this. And here comes the word fatherly, not as a noun, but rather as an adjective. Even though there is, there's an L-Y at the end, don't be fooled, this is an adjective, not an adverb. I do know my parts of speech. In any case, Luther writes, God does all this out of pure fatherly and divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness of mine at all. We don't earn creation. We didn't sign up for these marvelous bodies we live in or for this marvelous world on which we live. And the result of that, we owe God thank. So for all of this, I owe it to God to thank and praise, serve and obey him. And then comes the amen to this article, which Luther says amen means this is really true. And so he ends each article. This is most certainly true. Okay. There we have it. I owe it to God. In the large catechism, Luther notices something. He notices that this comes out of God's mercy, but he also notices how few of us believe it. How much could be said if we were to describe how few people believe this article? We all pass over it. He's including himself in that list. We recite it, but we don't really believe it. And then he adds, therefore, if we believed it, this article should humble and terrify all of us. In other words, it should act like law too, showing us our sin. Why? Because look at how we misuse what God has given us in creation in so many ways. So in a sense, we're still with sin here. But the sin is both in us and also around us. God preserves us from evil. So he's mentioned evil. The solution to evil, of course, will come in the second article with Christ. Um, 
And he adds then also, we should recognize how give, God gives and does all of this so that we may sense and believe in them or see in them, excuse me, his fatherly heart, there it is again, that adjective, and his boundless love towards us. Luther only discovered that fatherly heart when he himself had children and realized this unbelievable innate love that one has for one's own offspring. And then he understood that father didn't mean judge as he had experienced his own father, but rather meant love. Well, there are so many hymns that I could have chosen. So we're going to start with 824. Hymn 824 is, This is My Father's World. Um, <clears throat> Malky Badcock, a woman who only lived into her 40s, wrote this, uh, this hymn. Many of us know this. The third verse, though, like Luther, understands that there is an issue of evil that you kind of heard echoed in the background. Here's the way in the third verse that Malky B. Babcock puts it. This is my father's world. Oh, let me not forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heaven ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. And that's the juxtaposition between God as king here and evil, though the wrong be off so strong. Let us pray another hymn. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord our God, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord our God, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight for the mystic harmony linking sense to sound and sight. Christ, God, our uh, Lord, our God, to thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. For each perfect gift of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven, for thyself, best gift divine to our world so freely given, Christ our God, to thee we raise this is our sacrifice of praise. Amen.